Hello and welcome to Kadoink Studios. I am Kadoink and today I have for you another replay from the clan, the team, NON Esports, non esports. They are a German team who have so kindly sent me several of their replays uh, for many different players on their team. They are a German team and I will post their link in the description bar so please go check them out and support them as it is very kind of them to support me by sending me replays and I am very thankful to them. So, in the top right of Cloud Kingdom, we do have Pulsar, four-team non-esports, spawning as the blue Zerg player, and in the bottom left, his opponent is Camus, the red Terran. This is mid to high level Master League play. Uh, team non-esports is for really high level gamers um, in the Diamond League, in the Master League, in the Grand Master League. And the last two games I casted were from some of their Terran players, and so I'm very excited to cast one of their Zerg players, and I hope to cast uh, one of their Protoss players as well, and see how the team is all around among the different races. So I'm very excited to see what kind of style Pulsar will be bringing to us today here on Cloud Kingdom. Uh, I suspect he will be going for a usual hatchery first, uh, maybe a spawning pool first, but I don't really foresee that coming out. Could be going for something like a 15-16 pool, uh, but it's more likely that he'll be just going for that hatchery and then putting down the spawning pool afterwards. In the meantime, Camus is walling off his ramp, usual thing. He's going to be going for a gasless expand, I believe. He could be getting that 15 gas and then expanding. It's a, a build that's, I think, a little bit safer because you can get a factory up earlier if you need it. You can get tech up a little bit earlier. I feel like it's a little more defensive. Uh, especially because then you can get this wall off and your command center is exposed. But it looks like he's not going to be doing that. He's just going to be going for the usual gasless expand. And Pulsar doing the thing I said he was going to do before. He's just getting down his hatchery, getting down his spawning pool. An interesting placement for a spawning pool. I kind of like this. Uh, if there are drops back here, then they're going to have to run over here to, to pick this off and there's more room for Zerglings to get to the Marines and pick them off. However, if there's a drop over here, then it's a little more exposed. But regardless, the Terran player is still going to try to run up here and pick off drones first because that's the more likely thing they'll be able to get. And as I said before, with the spawning pool down, being down here rather than blocking any of this off, uh, the Zerglings can get there without the Terran player guarding his marines too easily. So I like this. I like this placement a lot. It looks like he's also going to be getting his gas up. Be interested to see if he takes these guys out once he hits 100 gas and starts his zergling speed. Or if he's going to be going for something like a roach warren or an early baneling nest. Or something along those lines. Terran player in the meantime has got his command center going down. And also putting down his bunker. This is a bunker placement we see a lot in TVZ. We see a lot here. We see some here, a lot here, sometimes we see them here. This is actually probably the worst, to be honest. And this is actually a really cool placement. Because what it ends up doing is it's really walled off, and you can even wall it off further with a supply depot or two. But, if your Zerg opponent decides not to pick off this part and run up the ramp, the bunker will be protecting the ramp as well as this little area right here so what you can actually do is box your SCVs and force them to mine right here and then just pop your marines out start attacking those zerglings and then when the zerglings run towards you you pop them back into the bunker and you should be fine and you can even block it off with some more supply depots you can put one right here and then lower it when you're mining gas and then raise it when you have any kind of attack coming and this ends up being a very nice placement in general uh, you can also do this up here. We see a lot of players putting the bunker right around there in this general area. Just to protect protect everything up, make sure everything's good. Um, and it seems like Camus is going for the usual uh, reactor factory double hellion sort of play into starport. Might be getting a banshee up, might not. Uh, we'll see if he puts a tech lab down on this barracks or not. That'll be a That'll tell us whether or not he's going to be going for that. And getting a fast third. We do see this fast third quite often. But what can end up happening is Terran players can get really, really greedy. And then just a huge Zergling run by or Zergling push can do a lot of damage. Um, 
And we do see the tech lab on the barracks, so we will be going for that double Hellion Banshee sort of play that we see so often. Looks like he's also going to be sending some Marines to pick up one of Pulsar's overlords. Back in Pulsar's base, he's getting the double Evo chamber up, making a nice wall with this uh, with this queen and the spine crawler. I love this by Pulsar. So he can get his plus one attack and defense really, really early for his Zerglings. He can also get up another macro hatch as well. And if he needs to, he can put down spore crawlers if there's any kind of cloak banshee play, any, any silliness like that. Um, but if not, he's getting his upgrades, he's looking good. He can wall off really easily if some Hellions come by. And the Hellions won't be able to get in, they won't be able to get the drones. So I love this by Pulsar. In fact, these Hellions, they, they're really here to deny creep spread. And to, to see if they can get a chance to, to block off some drones. If, if we see here, there is a roach on the field. A couple more coming in as well. Two queens really, really close by. Should be able to protect this creep spread pretty well. The Hellions moving up at this time. If they go right now, they might be able to get in. Uh, but the roaches are coming down now. And it looks like he will be able to deal with this Hellion push with ease. Complete ease. And... Um, yeah, Camus will be forced to run home. This is something I really like. We do see a lot of Zerg players going for very, very fast third base. In fact, he is going for a third base right now. But sometimes this can be a little risky. So I love the fact that he's building this macro hatch, that he built that macro hatch in his base, and he's pushing out at the same time. He's going to have an awesome economy. He's going to have an awesome larva count if he needs it. And he's putting pressure onto his opponent. Ooh, but look at this. Camus is moving his Hellions forward, trying to pick off the reinforcements, but in the, at the same time, he does uh, does lose all the Hellions. One Banshee out at this time. This Banshee might be a saving grace, and this is what I was talking about before. The Zerglings are running in, and these Marines are able to attack them because of this nice bunker and supply depot placement. And the Zerglings won't be able to get a good enough surround. He's sending his SCVs around to the bunker, and yeah, there will not be a surround on this bunker. He can repair as much as possible. Uh, even though the roaches are attacking. And Camus is looking alright. Even though he's taking a lot of damage here, he won't die. Uh, this Banshee actually is going to be able to pick off all of these roaches over time. And these SCVs are going to help out just because the bunkers are going to die anytime soon. And, and the sooner these roaches die, the less SCVs will die. In fact, running them into his base is just a smart decision at this time. And Camus holds, but not without losing a ton of damage. If you look at this, 11 workers were killed. Did have to stop mining for a long time. Um, because this Banshee takes so long to kill those roaches, even though all the roaches die, you're spending a lot of time not mining, and now he's sending everything back. And he's taking his third at this time. He really needs to get this third saturated up. If he wants to do anything, if he wants to stay in this game as income, just look at that 500 mineral discrepancy between the two players income that can be so so bad for the Terran player as the Zerg is just looking great if we look here he's up to 51 drones which up to 59 it's not ideal he, he really wants to be at about 60 70 75 somewhere in that range especially when you're on three base um, and especially since you're taking a lot of gas he does have gas geysers on his main and his natural and I suspect he'll put them down on his third as well here in a little bit. But at the same time, he's being very active and building a lot of units. Uh, and he's making use of them. He's not just building them. He's sending these Zerglings in. Uh, looks like he's going to be stopping them for a little while. But I suspect, yes, he will be moving into the third. And he will deny this. He will have to lift up this uh, command center after this SCV is finished. Or maybe not. Actually getting dangerously low. Ooh, this is so... Man, just... Getting down to the red that's very, very risky, and now he's sending in some Hellions, but man, a lot of Zerglings, they can do a lot of damage, but Camus will be fine killing off all the Zerglings with some Marines and some Hellions. But once again, denied mining time, he's going to have to repair this command center, and the meantime, in the meantime, Pulsar's looking great. He's uh, spreading his creep, getting his bases saturated. If we look now, he's up to 71 drones, and that's that money amount that you want when you're playing as Zerg, and you're on three bases. So, nothing to worry about. He's uh, got four hatcheries in total. He's keeping on top of his larva injects, and yeah, just really on top of his upgrades, getting plus two right now. It will finish before the Terrans, plus two. And now he's getting up those infestors, and he's going to start looking very, very scary in the Terran player. What does he have? He's got his third up. 
getting a bunker here to protect this. I like this, building a supply depot wall. There's a little bit of a gap here that he needs to close and can close when the time comes. I like how he has some Hellions around the map. He has his Banshee over here watching this watchtower. Has another Hellion over here, just kind of keeping track of a lot of different things. And this little Zergling run by should be picked off very easily. It shouldn't do that much damage. Um, but once again, Camus doesn't have anything here quite yet. In fact, oh man, losing these mules could be huge. Two or three, all, all of them going down. That's actually, maybe they're just out of life. Yeah, they, they were probably just out of, out of time, but that could have been very, very bad. And now he's getting plus three, and he's also getting adrenal glands. So this is very scary. He's going to be going up to ultralisks. He's getting that ultralisk cavern, getting a fourth uh, base up, fifth hatchery. Some hellions moving across the map for Camus, but I don't know what he can do at this point. The Zerg player for non-esports is just in full macro mode, just going crazy. He's getting burrow, all these upgrades. Just look at that production tab. Also moving across the map with these Zerglings, picking off those hellions, just being very very active I love this this is exactly what you need to do when you're wanting to get into the higher level leagues the master league is is move out and make your presence known he has still another little zergling squad over here that's gonna be morphing into banelings fortunately for him this uh, this wall is pretty much complete I don't know if the banelings can get through there but it'll definitely take them a lot longer to get to the mineral line if they can um, so I do like that wall out of Camus. I like that he's getting up siege tanks. He's going to really need those uh, to deal with the banelings, especially if they're speed banelings. But in the meantime, they're just a ton of zerglings. So many zerglings. If we look at the army supply, oh my gosh, just he's up to 92. Uh, actually, both players pretty even, but the upgrades are going to be in... Pulsar's favor, and oh man, just a great surround by the Zerglings picking off these siege tanks before they're even able to siege a nice little fungal growth going down, picking off a lot of these marines, but man, medevacs are really good keeping a lot of these marines alive, and wow, oh man, that's actually very bad for Cam, it's getting fungled like that, he really needs to split his, split his, uh, marines up more, and now... Pulsar can just re-max. He can just build 76 Zerglings at a time, three Ultralists, getting another Queen for his fourth fourth base. And I don't know what Camus is going to be able to do. Um, he's clumping up his units once again. I don't know if the Zerg player can see him. He, oh, he cannot, but he has just a great sense, game sense moving forward. Some nice splits going on for Camus, but will it be enough? These Zerglings will be able to get... Uh, up to the units and start picking off these marines. Some fungus going down, but they're not that great, and the ultras are now coming in to do the rest of the damage. Uh, actually just kind of wandering around because there's so many zerglings. And, man, Camus just getting picked up hard. These little, these little drops aren't really doing that much. In fact, this queen alone might be able to pick them off as there's no medevac to support them. And the zerglings are going to come in and deal the rest of the damage. Yeah, this is this is looking so good for Camus. He's just his plus three is finished. Uh, he has everything he could want. He's getting his spire up so he can do one of those crazy tech switches in the middle of the game if he needs to. I'd really like to see him take the gas here, take a fifth base, and then a sixth base base over here and take the gas. And kind of the benefit of taking bases spread across the map is if a Terran player hits really hard here. Well, then this base is completely protected and vice versa. Um, the only problem with that is if he does tech switch into the Broodlords, then he can kind of be pulled apart um, by taking bases far away from each other. So we'll see what Pulsar opts to do. It looks like Camus is going to be moving out, this time sieging his tanks up. Um, but he doesn't have that many Marauders, and Marines aren't that good against Ultralis. Ultralis are really doing a lot of splash damage to Marines, especially with... Um, Fungal growth, if he can get some good fungals down on the marines and the marines can't split up nicely, the ultras can just do loads of damage. And it looks, a, looks as though the big engagement is going to be happening. The marines uh, kind of split up nicely. The zerglings coming in as well as the ultras. The infestors aren't really doing anything though. They're getting hit by the siege tank fire, but man, there's just not enough units for Camus in the end. Um, even though all these infestors are going down, he's left at just two. The army does get cleaned up. Yeah, Pulsar is looking really, really good. He's commanding, just commanding this game. 
He will be moving up, trying to pick off this little force. There's a nice siege tank here, kind of hidden behind these rocks. Uh, but the Ultros will be able to pick it off. And Zerglings just swarming in from every direction. Uh, I do believe some Infestors are over here. They sent out some Infestors. I forgot the word for that. And uh, yeah, now he's just in his base, killing everything. The Man Center is looking dangerously low. He really needs to lift that up if he wants to keep it. A lot of Medivacs, though, um, could help Camus out a lot. He does have a lot of Marines and Marauders, and there aren't that many Ultras left on the field. But look at this. The third is under assault as well. All these Zerglings swarming in. There's nothing in this bunker, so it's just kind of wasting time as well. The missile turret going up for little to no reason, probably to deal with the investors. But man, Pulsar is just everywhere. He's not able to do anything with this Ultra, so he just burrows him like a boss. Um, and yeah, now he's really down to just one mining base. His main has nothing in it. His natural, I mean, what is... 20 workers. Oh man, 20 workers among three bases. This is this is not good for Camus. Um, in fact, this is looking very very bad. I we can see that he just tech switched, and he's getting uh, he's getting those corruptors up. There are no Vikings on the map. In fact, we see a ton of Marauders now to deal with those. Um, excuse me, with those with those Ultralists. And now the Zerglings are coming in to deal with this little force. It was kind of foolish for Camus to move out. A little bit risky. Oh man, a fantastic fungal growth on these medevacs, and they are all going to go down. There's no way Pulsar is going to let them escape. Oh man, this is so, so bad. So bad for Camus. The Marauders are just getting picked apart by these Zerglings. He sees the Corruptors, he knows the tech switch is happening, and he's no he knows there's nothing he can do about it. He has no minerals. Down to what, one starport? Looks like just one starport, and there's the GG. Man, that's just such a hard thing to deal with as a Terran player. If you just get far behind, there's no way you can take the late game because your opponent will just just tech switch super hard on you. You know, you can deal with that Ultralist stuff all day, but then when they switch to Broodlords and you're not prepared, you're, you're not going to be able to win the game. So, fantastic play by Pulsar. Thank you so much for sending me this replay and letting me see a high-level Zerg play, um, as well as some good Terran play as well. Uh, big shout out to non esports. Please go check out their website. The description will be, or the link will be in the description bar below. And once again, uh, send me your replays. Send them to kadoinkreplays at gmail.com. I will be posting that in the description bar. Um, yeah, I love seeing your games. Please limit it to one or two replays per email. Just let me cast them, and then and then you can send more later because. I want to make sure I get everyone's games in and, and I don't get like 10 replays from one person and feel obliged to do them all. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you for keeping track with my channel and keeping up with me. I'm sorry I didn't get any games out last week. I had someone over um, visiting. But I'm free now and I'm casting games and I'm excited to hear your comments. So comment below. And thank you so much again. I will see you guys in the next video.